Futureverse had an unbelievably huge announcement today partnering with Animoca Brands, and it sounds like it was a swap in equity. They specifically highlighted within the announcement that it was to support the Futureverse token ecosystem, including Root, Silo, and Asto, and I was like, oh my goodness, this is absolutely insane. But for Mochaverse specifically, it's one of the most highly uh, touted, respected collections that I feel that's out there, and this kind of plays into the role of, okay, well, if Futureverse potentially offers these Mochaverse NFTs, Future Score, well, that's what Animoca is trying to do with being connected with all of this. And again, those uh, Mocha tokens specifically are coming out. And so does this mean for people that are staking root that we are going to get Mocha token in there for the Vortex? Who? There's a little bit of, of speculation. New part of the silo platform launching shortly, which I think is probably the first time I've spoken about this, where people will be able to go into that and create their own communities and have all of the features that you'd get from a social experience inside of those communities and start to introduce mechanics, uh, community building mechanics in there, token gating content, all this kind of stuff. And so providing tools for community to build their own communities is a big part of this as well and make that like social graph something that's portable between applications and experiences. And so a big part of the idea of the metaverse for us is not just having ownable content, it's about owning the other elements of your metaverse experience, including your social graph and your, and your social identity. So you can jump between different experiences and take your friends with you too. And just kind of curious, like what you foresee, I mean, I know you can't, speak on details and we've seen little things um, with the mints and um, tradeverse and listing fees going to kind of drive network activity um, mm. but nothing kind of compared to what we saw originally with like the four million fifa getting minted so mm -hmm. like how i guess how do we see or like even something like with silo i think a lot of transaction fees are easy to comprehend in root um because we've seen them but like how does something like silo drive into that like root network activity or asto or will we see more of that through like the paper i guess so there's there is a connect connected tissue between what we've outlined in the asm paper and what um we're building with silo um if you think about silo being the data infrastructure layer and then asm being the data that sits on top of it that's kind of how they interact um and so when Murma Matrix gets cranking, that will drive a lot of transactional activity into um, the silo network. Um, and that's, you know, that's yet to be rolled out, um, but something we'll share more detail on next month as part of the post Substrate 1 upgrade roadmap um, in terms of network architecture going forward. There's also some pretty exciting, I think, interesting, um, interesting and exciting things on the um, on the kind of front end social graph, um, social experience side of things that we've been working on for silo that will bring in some really big co communities, um, to, to bootstrap that, um, that social graph infrastructure as well. So to some really cool things coming out for silo, um, and, and it is kind of the thread between, you know, all of the things that I've outlined in both the ASM paper and in that article on X about how we maintain this persistent data state that applications and experiences and clients can hook into to to produce this the impression of one giant world because that data lives in in silo infrastructure can we expect silo tokenomics update soonish yes yeah, so in terms of tokenomics of silo, um yeah our focus is really just on delivering the next features on the roadmap um, once we actually get some of that core functionality live, um, then we'll look to put out some um, uh, some updated comms around all the tokenomics. Great. Now, the next one's for the asset registry, I believe. When you edit a boxer, the changes are registered in the asset registry, yet silo is not contributed to the Vortex. Are these asset registry transactions currently free? Uh, yes, so the silo network isn't really up and running properly yet. Um, we just got the first stage of staking live to reward our tokens, our, our holders, while we work on the rest of the roadmap. Um, the longer vision is to actually have silo running essentially as an L2 on the root network, and there's a lot of work that's currently underway for that. 
Um, but we still need to actually build that. From Futureverse is, you know, we don't get to access all the tools right now, but from the papers and everything else, you guys are doing that. And so I'd like to kind of yeah. jump into silo just a wee little bit here. I mean, yeah. metaverse notifications, asset registers, silo graphs, silo oracles, they're all coming for the silo network. And it seems very, very exciting. But from my point of view, I don't know if it's supposed to be for the everyday user. A lot of that sounds like more for people who are building or wanting to create yeah. these experiences. So can you touch? a little bit more on those? Yeah, I mean, I think with all protocols, they are built, if they're being built right, they're being built for developers. You know, that's that's the lit layer which, um, which, which they have to work for and do a good job for. Mm -hmm. Because users experience things at the, the higher orders, the application layer, right? Um, and so um, Silo is really about data availability. You know, that's kind of the core value proposition there is how do we get, how do we store data and transport it so it's at the right place at the right time with the right fidelity um, and right, right trustworthiness for that kind of data. Um, and in order to do that, we, you know, we need a robust protocol underneath that um, can store and transport that data. Notifications is one of those use cases. Um, to say that it's not a consumer centric proposition though is not wouldn't be the right way to frame it because the value proposition for this stuff is that users data can follow them um that their notifications can follow them that um their social graphs their friends can follow them um that the way they interact with um artificial intelligence can follow them them and so all of those things are user centric propositions but you have to build it in a way that developers can access you know and the first like kind of use case for us is is um notifications and i've seen the the latest version of that working um last week and we get we're getting excited to start to integrate that into some of the applications and show how notifications can be used not only to um keep people updated about what's going on but also provide a transport layer for for oracles and other things that can power you know new experiences inside of applications games and experiences 